Don't worry, Mom. Not only are you concerned about it, but your kids are too. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. There's one thing I've noticed when I go into companies and talk to their retirees or soon-to-be retirees, you know, within the next 10 years, about tips that they can implement for their own financial future. I often get questions from the baby boomer moms asking about how they can better talk to their millennial kids about saving for retirement. Because everybody knows once we're sitting in our 50s that we could have been doing more in the years before. So today I have five tips for emerging adults as they are stepping into their careers. My first tip is to join the 401k or company retirement plan that is available to you as soon as you can. As you're interviewing, this needs to be a big part of the interviewing process. You have taken several years to invest in your education, and now you're taking all of that knowledge base and applying it to a company, and you're giving them your time and expertise in exchange for a paycheck. As you are investing in this company, and hopefully long-term, hopefully it's a good arrangement for both of you, you are allowing that company to be profitable. And so as you are creating sustainability for them in the future, likewise, you want to look for a retirement plan for yourself. So you want to make sure that company has some form of retirement savings available to you. So if the company's match program looks like you putting in 3% and the company matching 3%, make sure you put all 3% in because you want to get as much free money from the company as possible. Don't forget to look for a Roth option in your retirement plan. And if you have that capability, do it. Tip number two for emerging adults as they're entering the workforce is to really balance the paying off of debt and the saving for the future. So I get a lot of questions from young adults, from millennials, as they are entering this workforce, they have a bunch of debt. Should we be paying off all of our debt first and then start investing in retirement? Or do we go, you know, we've had a couple of years where we've lost earnings or lost retirement savings capabilities. So do we just dive into the retirement part and just let the student loans kind of figure themselves out. When I was in this situation, this is what my husband and I decided to do in order to keep that balance. We first tallied up the monthly payments that we had to make towards our student loans. At the time, we were living rent-free, and so we were able to add a little bit more towards our student loans. So we added a couple extra hundred bucks on top of the regular payment. We then joined our retirement plans. So this happened basically simultaneously. And when we joined our retirement plans, we joined so that we could get the maximum free dollars from the employers that we had decided to work with. So that's how you balance the two. You put a little extra umph behind your student loans and you also just join your company retirement plan as soon as you are eligible. My tip number three is that frugal is king. We're bringing frugal back. Yep. Them other millennials don't know how to act. Yep. An issue I often see with millennials is that they're trying to live at the same lifestyle standard that their parents are. The problem is you don't actually have the income to back that nor the savings. Start as frugal as possible. Try to find really inexpensive ways to live. Do you really need to live in an apartment by yourself? It might be worth giving it a couple of years where you're living with some roommates, keeping your expenses low, maybe even sharing meals together to keep your grocery expenses low, and that way you can really start plugging away at your debt, at your savings for retirement, and building that extra emergency buffer. Oh my goodness, that leads us into tip number four, and that is to build an emergency savings. An emergency savings can start at $1,000 just to get it off the ground, but you really wanna get it to three to six months of your living expenses. So you're looking at rent, groceries, you know, just some of those basics that you have to pay for even if you're out of a job. Don't be tempted to go robbing it just for a concert that you want to go to though. Keep a level head about your savings. Your emergency savings needs to not be touched. My fifth and final tip for emerging adults as they are entering the workforce is to stay humble but always learning hungry. We millennials, well, we have this feeling that once we have our education in place, we should be able to hit the ground running. We are definitely in a better spot. We've, we've taken the time to understand a niche from the educational perspective, but that's all theoretical. And it takes the hands-on knowledge to understand how the business works, um, the chain of command, how communication flows, all of that, which takes time in your industry. As you enter this workforce, expect a little bit of patience in yourself and be humble in that process of learning hands-on. But on the other hand, we have to stay learning hungry. 
I see too many people in my industry that have been in the industry for 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years and are just sitting back and not keeping up with their education, not striving to find answers, but are relying on experience that they've had in the past. Industries change rapidly and technology definitely has sped up that change. So make sure you're always keeping up with your continuing education and pursuing more learning. That's my five tips for emerging adults as they are entering the workforce. I hope it's helpful for you, and until next time, you take care.